A common situation in corporate finance is that we need to find the after-tax weighted average cost of capital for a company. That is the after-tax WAC. Sometimes we want to do this under the current capital structure. So using the company's existing levels of debt and, um, and equity. Other times we want to come up with a hypothetical target leverage ratio and figure out what that, um, the after-tax weighted average cost of capital will be under that hypothetical leverage. Now, in order to um, do that, we need to first determine what an appropriate target capital structure is, and then figure out what the inputs to the after-tax WAC calculation are under this new hypothetical uh, leverage ratio. Situations where we might want to do this is after an acquisition when debt um, could be used for um, that acquisition or perhaps a recapitalization event. In this video, I'm going to walk through step by step how to do this. The first step is to come up with a target leverage ratio. And we're going to do that based off comparable companies. So um, I have set up a table here of five comparable companies. Um, actually, I will take a pause here and say this, this workbook is available at the link in the description, and I would encourage you to download it and work through this workbook with me um, together. The comparable companies table I've set up here has the market capitalization and the debt and the equity beta for these five comparable companies. We're going to find a target leverage for the company we're trying to figure out the WAC, after tax WAC for by using the average of the comparable company's leverage ratios. So the first thing we need to do is figure out for company one that its debt to equity ratio is this 750 divided by 900. Now I'm going to make a couple points here. The first thing is we care about market values in finance. This debt here does come off the, the balance sheet or typically does come off the balance sheet. And we are using that as a proxy or so as an estimate of the market value of a company's debt. The market capitalization is based off the current share price and the number of shares outstanding. So we multiply the number of shares outstanding times the current market price to come up with the market capitalization. We do not use the book equity. That is incorrect. So for comparable company one, we have a, um, a debt to equity ratio of 0.83. Now this is set up as a formula. So if I drag it across, we can find out the debt equity ratios for these five companies. Now I've set up a table of assumptions over here. These include the risk-free rate, the market risk premium, the, the current tax rate, as well as a cost of debt. The industry debt to equity ratio is going to be our target leverage for the company we're trying to figure out its after-tax whack. So to do that, we are simply going to take the average of our comparable companies debt to equity ratios. And so in this situation, our target debt to equity ratio is 0.5. Now in the, this table, I have provided equity betas for the comparable companies. Now each one of these comparable companies has debt and therefore the equity beta is going to be higher than the asset beta. That is because when a company takes on leverage, the equity becomes riskier and its beta will increase. This is, uh, its beta will increase relative to its asset beta. Now, a company's asset beta is equal to its equity beta when it does not have any leverage. But as soon as the company adds leverage, its equity beta is going to be greater than its asset beta. We want to find out a hypothetical company's um, asset beta, or what is the beta of the assets in this industry. To do that, we need to undo the effect of leverage or unlever the, 
uh, the comparable companies. To figure out the acid beta, we are going to apply this formula, which says that the acid beta is equal to the levered beta times this quantity right here. So we have 1 divided by 1 plus 1 minus the tax rate times the debt to equity ratio of the company. So let's apply that formula. We take the equity beta, which is now the levered beta, and I have set up the tax rate over here in the assumptions. I'm also going to lock down the uh, tax rate cell because I'm ultimately going to drag across this formula. I would encourage you to like be very careful and refer to uh, uh, to make sure you um, apply this formula correctly, the parentheses can be a little bit challenging, or the order of operations. So when we drag this across, we have the asset betas for each company in the industry. For a representative company um, in this industry, we're going to say that the asset betas is the average of all the comparable companies. So the asset beta for this industry is 1.05. Now we can move on to step two and calculate the new cost of equity under the new target leverage. So our target leverage is going to be the industry debt to equity ratio. And we need to apply this formula of figuring out a leveraged beta um, under this new leverage ratio. So we're simply going to apply that formula. And when I was saying that uh, it's kind of tricky with the parentheses in this, I actually just noticed that I included this parenthesis in the wrong spot. So the after tax, or sorry, the levered beta for a company in this industry with this target debt to equity ratio, their equity beta is going to be 1.46. So this beta levered is the, uh, the, the target company's um, equity beta. We then can move on to step three, which is to calculate the cost of equity um, using this new equity beta calculated in step two. To do that, we are going to apply the CAPM formula. So the cost of equity is going to be the risk-free rate plus this levered beta times the market risk premium. So over here in the assumptions area, I have set up the risk-free rate. I have selected 2%. Then we add that to the new levered beta times the market risk premium, which I've set up over here in assumptions. So what, is that, what that is saying is that under this new capital structure um, of a, a debt equity ratio equal to 0.5, the cost of equity to this target company is 10.8% or 0 0.108. Now the final step here is to calculate the new after-tax WAC, which is this formula right here. One thing to note, though, is that in the after-tax WAC formula, we have the equity to value ratio in it and the debt to value ratio in it. So far, we've been using the debt to equity ratio. That is not what goes into the after-tax WAC formula. 
What goes into the after-tax WAC is the equity to value and the debt to value ratios. Thankfully, there's an easy conversion such that the equity to value um, ratio is equal to one over one plus the debt to equity ratio and a similar formula for the, uh, the debt to value relation, uh, ratio. So in this first step, we're gonna calculate the equity to value ratio using this industry uh, debt to equity ratio. So that, that is our target. So we have approximately two thirds equity to value and one third debt to value ratio. Now we can calculate the after tax WAC. So we're gonna multiply the equity to value ratio times the cost of equity we just figured out in step three. Then we add the debt to value ratio times one minus the tax rate times the cost of debt here, which I have said is 3.5%. And so the after-tax WAC in this situation is 8.1%. So as a summary, we worked through four steps here. The first is that we used comparable companies to find asset betas and target leverages for the company that we're trying to calculate this after-tax WAC for. In step two, we figured out the new cost of equity under the target leverage. In step three, we calculated the cost of equity using the new equity beta that we calculated in step two. And in step four, we calculated the after-tax WAC based off the previous inputs. I will note that in this example, we are taking the cost of debt as exogenous. This is an assumption. Um, it also implies that the beta of the debt is zero, which makes this formula work. Um, or makes this formula appropriate. Um, if you're interested in exploring the assumptions behind these different formulas, there is a link in the description to an excellent SSRN paper, or a paper uh, posted on SSRN. Hopefully you found this helpful, and if you did, um, it would I would appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up because other students might find it helpful, and yeah, giving it a thumbs up helps them find it too. So thank you very much, and hopefully this was helpful.